Hello, welcome back to the channel. It is Dan, Nocturne Knives. Today I'm bringing you another unboxing video. I have some fun stuff for my new Spyderco Paramilitary 2. This Color Shop exclusive version in the Warncliffe Blade. So I am very excited to check these out. With that said, let's get into it. So this box is coming from Rock Scale Design. As you can see here on the front, I have a set of handle scales and a backspacer. Side note, I've been carrying this around for the past few days and it is excellent. The Warncliffe blade is so nice for opening packages, all that kind of stuff. It's a great, really great blade shape. Okay, we've got backspacer here, nice sticker, very cool. Put that up there out of the way and then all right so i got these in the hexi pattern and graphite black color okay we're off the bat these look and feel really really nice like they feel great they look super nice i'm very excited to put them on this knife and for the backspacer i also got it in graphite black going for the all blackout looks great i already have one of these on my other spider co pm2 the smoky mountain knife works arctic storm before i go ahead and install these i'll get a baseline weight for the knife and then put the scales on so for this we're looking at 3.8 ounces for this pm2 g10 scales only mod i've done so far is this lynch clip and we'll take a look at the thickness coming in at 0.45 inches got my mat out have all my tools and everything. Now we'll treat this, you know, I'll just walk through the disassembly process. I'll tune this thing up just a little bit because it's running pretty well right now, but I think I can improve it just a little bit. And so hopefully this video will have some value to it. Clip off that the clip is T6. And now I'll take both pivots, both sides of the pivot out, which is a T10. Sometimes these Spyderco pivots are a little tricky. You want to make sure you have a high quality bit. Mine are Weeha brand, would highly recommend. And then body screws are T8. Now, occasionally the PM2 can be a little bit tricky to disassemble. We'll see how this goes. Hopefully it will be an easy one, but if it's not, it can be a nice learning experience. So once you get all those screws out, this sh scale should prop pop off pretty easily. Grab the lock bar, and then you can spin this scale out of place. And get the blade out. Nice, not too dirty or anything. Looks like it's got some decent lube. Take both of the washers off. Sometimes these screws will be Loctite in or a little too tight or something, and you'll go to turn it, and the spacer will just spin freely. This did not happen in this case, which is very nice. But if that does happen, um, you can either get some pliers and hold the back, hold the standoff in space. See, this one is spinning. First thing I'll try is get a little piece of this rubber shelf liner stuff. I'm going to wrap that around it. And then I'm going to take some vice grips and the the rubber shelf liner will protect it from scratches and things and hopefully give us enough grip. There we go. So that was enough grip to hold the spacer in place while I turned the screw. So most of the time that should work for you. If you're still having problems, you can take a heat gun or like a hair dryer, something like that, and just heat up the screw and the standoff to help melt any of that Loctite that's on there. Man, this thing's kind of grimy in here. Jeez, look at that. So at this point, you have kind of two options. All the hardware is off. The only thing left is this lanyard tube. The tricky thing about it is it's flared out, so it catches the G10 and the stainless steel liner. I have this thing. It's made by Sharp Dress Knives. It's called a lanyard cube or something like that, and it's made to pop this lanyard out. So that's what I'll use for the first one, but I've seen a trick that we might be able to try on the second one. So here we go. Okay. 
and lanyard came out super easy. All right, that was nice. That's very easy. Excellent. And there's the liner out. Here's our G10 scale. No damage on the scale from the lanyard tool. Excellent. Now, I've seen another trick for this. Take a thin screwdriver, separate the handle, and then supposedly you can just pull it up like this and it's supposed to pop out the lanyard tube. Oh, there we go. Actually, yeah, that worked very well. Okay, I'm pretty impressed. So you just take a thin handled screwdriver. I would recommend something even thinner than this, but this is the thinnest one I had laying at hand. I didn't really want to walk over and get my long Torx drivers. So you just get a thin screwdriver like this and then pop it under the top of the liner, pull it all the way back, and boom, actually worked very well. No damage on the G10. Some kind of scratches on the liner. I don't even know if those are scratches, but they're on the inside, so no issues there. And then it scuffed the G10 just a little, but I don't see any actual damage, but most of that will wipe off. And also, I'm not going to be using these scales, so I really don't care. And that's just on the inside. And I bet it would cause less damage with a thinner um, bar than a driver. Shout out to Thomas Moore of the Milli PM2 Pair 3 Club on Facebook for sharing that tip. With everything apart, I'm just going to clean all this up. These are some little like gun cleaning patch type things, and I've just got some rubbing alcohol on them. I have everything clean. Before I put it back together, I'm going to polish these washers just a little bit. I have some Flitz Metal Polish. I'm just going to put a dab onto a microfiber cloth, just like that. Here's my washer. You can see part of it is, has been polished through contact with the blade. Uh, I'm going to work on that same side and just give it a few wipes. Here's the other one. Now I'm just going to clean off. I think now I'm ready to assemble everything. I'm going to start from the clip side. Take this liner, set it in there. And then I'll go ahead and put in this top screw and just a dab of Loctite. Second backspacer screw. So I have my standoffs. Oh, actually, you don't need this second standoff. That's the great thing about this backspacer, is it takes the place of this lower standoff, and it takes the place of the lander tube. So just pop that on here and then screws directly into it. Perfect. So I have my first scale complete. It got um, lanyard with uh, the backspacer in there. I have this stop pin. And now I'm going to take my first washer, set it on here, and then take this pivot barrel, which is also a bushing, find the D-shaped side right there on top and pop it in on top of the washer. 
So that's going to hold the washer in. Now take one side of the pivot, hit it with a Loctite, just a dab. And then put that in and this will hold the washer in. And hold that pivot bushing in. Now I have KPL, this is regular here. Just going to do a two tiny dots on this washer and one tiny dot on the pivot barrel. Blade all cleaned up, goes on here. And then back with the lube, two tiny dots on the blade and then I take my other washer, make sure it's going shiny side towards the blade. There we go. And I have some KPL heavy right here that I'm going to use on the detent ball. Take that and just put a drop into this detent hole. Now I can take my other liner and pop that on. It goes over the back spacer, over the pivot, lock seats in there, and now I take my other scale and put that on. Now if these don't seat easily, disengage the lock and they should pop together just fine. Open it up and now it's not trying to fly as part nearly as much. This is where you kind of need to use three hands can take this body screw, pop it in, and as soon as I get the body, the first body screw in, we'll be fine. Okay, there we go. Now for final reassembly, when I'm putting the pivot in, I'm going to go ahead and loosen all these body screws. I'm going to get the pivot tightness set first, and then I'll tighten the body screws down to where they need to be. Second side of the pivot, lock tight. So that is far too much tension. Okay, I have the pivot set where there's no no play, no side-to-side -side play, and it's wanting to drift shut. So that's right where I want it. I'm going to take these screws, and I'm going to tighten them down all the way to start. I think I'll have to loosen them, but this is just where I'm going to start. That's the thing with PM2s, is all these screws play a big role in the action. As I expected, just binding a little bit, I'm going to loosen the backspace, the stop pin screws ever so slightly. Those are usually the number one culprit. That's better. All right, still no play, no side to side, no up and down, but the blade drops. Screws tight, action tuned, everything in place. Only thing left is the pocket clip. Now this, this is an aftermarket clip, it's a Lynch clip. Unfortunately, they were out of black Cerakote when I ordered this, although they have since come, in st come back in stock. So I may place an order for a black Cerakote Lynch clip. I wasn't sure how the stone wash would look on this. I was hoping it would look okay, but I'm kind of deciding that I think I would ultimately prefer the all black. Let me get this out of the way and we'll take a look at this. Boom. Here is what I'm left with. Started out as a Cutlery Shop exclusive Spyderco PM2 Warney Blade 
all black everything. I have gotten the Rock Scale Designs Hexi scales in this graphite black. I got a graphite black backspacer, Lynch clip. Some first impressions on the scales right off the bat. They are awesome. I I really like them. Upon first seeing them, first handling them, they feel really, really nice. They look amazing. I, I love that pattern, the kind of the hexy pattern, kind of like scales. I'm not really sure, but I think it looks really cool. The black on here matches the blade very well. It goes really well with the hardware and everything. It's a really good looking black. And the feeling, they're super smooth. There's no sharp edges, nothing catching. The texture on here, it's this nice kind of blasted texture. Feels really good. All the corners are nicely uh, contoured or radius rounded. You see here, you have nice contouring here. Up on the corners, there's no hard edges or anything like that. So in hand, really nice. Feels excellent, really solid. Balance is still decent. It's a decent balance. You would hold it, ideally your balance would be like here. It's just about a half inch back from that. Not bad at all. It doesn't feel too heavy in hand. Um, action, still breaking in. I think it's going to be perfect. Here's a weight measurement. So we're looking at 4.7 ounces with the scales. I believe it was 3.8. So you're looking at an increase of about 0.9 ounces, which I'd say is totally reasonable for some full tie scales like this with stainless steel liners. No problems with that at all. I think it'd be really cool. Maybe take these scales, do a round two, where on this side, there's no stainless steel liner. Or sorry, on this side, you get rid of the stainless steel liner. I think that'd be really cool because you don't really need it on this side. It's just for structural integrity behind the G10, but without G10, not doing too much. The new thickness is coming in at 0.47, so pretty much identical in thickness. Backspacer looks really nice. It flows super well. Oh yeah, that's 4.7 width plus the backspacer, so that's adding a little bit. So I like the backspacer, flows really nicely, lines up super well. I love the integrated laner tube, really nice and definitely makes disassembly and reassembly a lot easier. I really enjoyed the one I've had on my Arctic Storm PM2, so I wanted to pick one up to complement this build as well. My first impressions, very positive of these scales, liking them a lot, and I will update in the future as I use them more, carry them, all that kind of stuff. Drop Probably drop a full review video in a few weeks, month or two, something like that after I've had a chance to carry them around, get to know them a bit better. And I think that is all I have for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you found it interesting. Maybe you even learned something. That'd be awesome. Drop a comment down below. Let me know what you think of this build. Are you into these scales, the colors, materials, all that kind of stuff? What do you think about it? Blade shape. I know it's kind of a, a weird blade shape, maybe polarizing, but I'm into it. I like it. And I would love to know what you think about it. And with all that said, I hope you enjoyed the video and I will catch you on the next one.